No legs, not enough energy, no pace across the defensive line. Tillemans in centre midfield, can't run. Uh, Hazard just hasn't got the juice in his legs either. Witzel looks a shadow of the player he was four years ago. Can't go deep in the tournament uh, playing in that fashion. Need to get legs in the team. Onan, I'll give him a bit of that in centre midfield. Thought he made a difference when he came on. I'd have a look at uh, Face at centre half, the young yeah. centre half, playing at Leicester. He's a quite athletic. And it's important, you know, it's all well and good saying experienced players, high technical ability, but you need to be able to run up and down the pitch and they haven't got enough legs in the team at the moment. Shea, would it be too uh, cruel to say that uh, De Bruyne can't really show his best when he's surrounded by what was essentially mediocrity tonight? Well, yes, it's probably at harsh at times when you're talking about players playing the World Cup finals are mediocre, but, you know, Batshuayi got the goal tonight, took his goal really well. But apart from that, his touch, you know, his, his awareness and around the box... There was a couple of times you could have laid it off to De Bruyne first time that maybe a Haaland or a Foden or a Grealish or whoever else a man said he would have yeah. done. Mm. They don't have that same, you're not in the same wavelength, you know. And I know it's difficult because they've only been together for a week. That's another problem with the World Cup. Normally they have a camp, they have friendlies, they build into it. I mean, even the, the manager Martinez mentioned have to use this game to get players up to fitness, which is a bit of a shambles, really. You know, they should be fit and raring to go. And, and, and as Anya rightly says, Hazard doesn't look fit. Could take an off after an hour or so. There's a lot more question marks over the, the Belgian team after tonight than, than before the game. Yeah, it, it's a bit of an odd scenario here, really, that we're, we're praising the team that has lost and we're, we're, we're picking holes in the team that has won. But uh, Canada acquitted themselves well. But at the end of the day, Anya, if you don't take your chances and you don't score goals, you're not going to go anywhere in the competition. So do they have the wherewithal within that team on going on what we've seen tonight to get goals in this competition? Yeah, look, I think they'll be frustrated because they did get into good opportunities at the time and they just mm. lack that little final ball, the final finish, and um, just that little bit of quality in that. That, But they have the players in the team. Like, you look at David, he's playing for Lille this year. He's nine goals, three assists in 15, game, 15 games. He's got a good record for Canada. But just didn't happen for them tonight. You see Laren coming in. He had some great chances and they just didn't take them opportunities and that's what the best teams do. So will they learn a lot from this? Yes, but like Shay said, that they didn't take their opportunity like maybe Saudi Arabia did yeah. and Japan did earlier today. Yeah, I mean, we can't make a full decision on all the groups yet, Kenny, but Group F, going on the evidence of the matches we've seen now, it's probably one of the weaker groups now in this competition. Yeah, I think Canada will take, won't feel as if they're out of competition after this defeat tonight. Absolutely not. It's yeah. had great uh, uh, heart from that, obviously, with Croatia and Morocco to come. So, yeah, I wouldn't rule this uh, Canadian team out. A little bit of similarities in terms of Saudi Arabia I saw today. Very athletic, kind of high-energy team, some uh, talented individuals, particularly high up the pitch. Gave away a really sloppy goal, I'd have to say, that we look at that in a little bit more t uh, detail. That really hurt them. Didn't have to work too hard. Belgium for the goal that they'd scored, but they're still very much in the tournament in Canada. On the whole, I was very impressed with them. Too easy to say they were unlucky. They weren't unlucky. Lack of quality in the final tour, as Anya said, and when the opportunities presented themselves, didn't take it. So you suffer if you don't. Yeah, and uh, Croatia, who will probably have been disappointed with their start against Morocco, they'll be reviewing their position again tonight, having watched that performance from these other two sides, won't they? Yeah, I mean, Croatia and Belgium are the standout teams in the group, aren't they? And you think, oh, they're going to play a lot better. Croatia were very disappointing earlier today. They were mm. very, very poor. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Uh, again, maybe the game's caught up with them, club games. And, of course, Belgium, I know they've won the game, so they'll take heart from that. We talk about Courtois before the game. It's a massive moment for him. He makes a penalty save. You know, it's a, make a big difference getting out of the group, perhaps. But... The team as a whole, again, as Kenny says, they look they look sluggish, they look yeah. tired, I don't know, looked off the mark. They weren't clicking at all, Peter. So I don't know I don't know what's wrong and, and how quickly can they fix it because the games come quick and fast as we know in the World Cup. Yeah. You were commenting when Trussard came on that maybe he might affect things because he has had a good season for Brighton. And he did look a little bit livelier uh, when he came off for Belgium. Yeah, it's he? very hard for him to get into this team, the, sh the way he's shaping up the team. He's got to knock Hazard or De Bruyne out of the team to get into one of those number 10 positions. That's not going to happen for a load of different you reasons. You think he'll stay loyal, particularly to yeah, Hazard? Yeah, I don't think it's just football and reason. Hazard in particular, big personality. That's a massive decision to put him on the bench. I don't think he's doing that. Mm. I think he changed the system, 4-3-3. I believe you can get De Bruyne and Trump Outside in the number eight positions, you can get Hazard playing left of a three or front. I think that's an option. That'd be a big call as well. He's been I, very loyal to the back three for I a long period of I time. I can't see him changing. The but sometimes you've got to do shape. it. You've got to be brave. It's too easy. Yeah, but he's not brave to take Hazard out. I don't think he's going to be brave enough to change the. Well, he, what, well, he can keep Hazard in and get Trazard in. That's the that's the halfway halfway house, isn't it? And in terms of that back three, I don't think you're you're protecting Alderweireld 
and Vertonghen by putting them in a back three. Sometimes for me, you play a back four and keep the back four nice and narrow on you. You actually protect your two centre halves who are lacking a little bit of pace and you get that extra forward higher up the pitch. So I think that's something which you might wrestle with over the next couple of days, Martinez. Does he have options within the squad though? When you look at that Belgian squad, I mean, they talk about there are some young players coming through, but uh, in defence, it doesn't appear that he has too many options. Yeah, look, and he seems to be very loyal, like Kenny says, to his back three. And obviously, they're usually experienced, but when they're lacking pace, I think as well, it doesn't really allow your wing backs to get as forward and doesn't free up the team, I suppose, to be in it as attacking threat as they should be. Um, and that will probably uh, punish them later on, I think, in the tournament as, as the games go on. 